Hey guys, welcome back. It is time to make a roll bar for my car. It looks like it's a nice day, so uh, I love September, October, so let's push this outside and we'll work outside. Start with taking out our beautiful seats here so they don't get burnt up with the welder. I have my tail light that I'm probably not going to use yet. This beautiful radio I've been saving for the dash, maybe, maybe not, I don't know yet. And here's my speedometer I have to put in. Love the look of that. So here's the weird floor bore and a roadster. Kicks up, has a weird arch that kicks back down. I'm sure that's all for where the seat's supposed to sit. Of course, we mess with a lot of that. So my idea is to create a plate, a step plate for this. No, I'll weld a full plate to this. I'll weld that full plate to the roll bar. Obviously, I'll do that out of the car first. So I'll have the straight up and downs to about here. Then from here, I want it to be an arch all the way to the other side. I've looked at a lot of different Model A roll bars and I've only liked the arch style for myself. Then right here, I'll have one that goes straight across for my seat belts to hang on to. Then I'll triangle it back down into the back, which now that I'm looking at it, I'd love to get rid of that big ass box in the back, the seat. Um, that's a huge step for the seat, so it's not even needed. I'm going to start with measuring it from the lower step, how long I want the DOM to be. And I think I'm going to go with 26 inches. I want to put my back seat in here and see how far it goes up, because all I want you to be able to see is the arch. That's the goal. Here's the back seat. Well, I might start it lower then. Good thing I grabbed this. From the lower step, it's be about 23 inches. I like to go with something even. It's just my style. Break the difference, put it at 23. Everything's a tool, everything's a workbench. I'll grind this chair out and weld on this chair if I have to. That's just the way I roll. Some people don't like that. But I'm never gonna be on one of those garage porn sites because I work in here. Now I have a big chop saw out back, a big drop saw or whatever you want to call it, carbide type saw like this. But it does not like to cut through this thick material. Take all day long. The blade I think is too thick. But if I uh, cut it by hand here, it'll take me just a couple seconds. to me side note these are level five cut gloves these are actually going to help you out a lot if you guys want to get a pair of these 
and Anna. I know it's a really weird name, but it's actually easy to remember because it's kind of like Ann twice with an A on the end. Check them out, level five cut resistant gloves. I wear them for everything. Because I use the right angle grinder a lot. So I'm going to cut a step out of this here to make up for the step on the Model A floor. Uh, the step's only half an inch. So I'll just cut it out halfway through the pipe, cut out a half an inch, and uh, that will give me the step and the pipe will be centered uh, on that subrail or whatever you want to call that there. <laughs> step for the floor all right I try to get you guys in here on the stand so you can see what's going on so here's my step just like that and I just had to level it out and get it as close to the top of or to the as far back as I could possibly can that's my overall goal <clears throat> Yeah, that's going to work out good. So now I need to make my plate that I'm welding this to. Because I'm not going to weld it to the frame there. So a half an inch by an inch and a half. Half inch. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a half. Half inch and a quarter. Okay. Four and a half inches long. Then we're gonna do, try to remember my measurements here. Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Then half inch. So that takes us to two. Then an inch and a quarter, which takes us to three and a quarter. And that measurement's not as important because that's the end that I'll just end up cutting off or not cutting off. Last one that's not really important there. And I'll just cut it up there somewhere. And that's the inside. I'm gonna cut it out and score everything on this side.
All right, so please ignore my dirty bench. I've built too many cars in the last three, four months. That's what I ended up with. All that's fixable and I need to weld my cuts. Just gotta keep hitting it. I think it turned out pretty good. So now you can see what I'm doing. Like that. And like this. Around there. So I'll pull this out of the car and weld these two pieces together really nice. And um, then I'll have more surface area to weld this completely down to the floor. So I'll cut it shy, cause it's the same length here. If I cut it shy, I'll have something to weld there. Then I'll cut it just shy on this side so I can get in there and weld the bottom step more. So a couple marks and that thing will be good to go. Then I can make the other side. Then I'm gonna attach the one that goes in the center together at least I think that's what I'm going to do. So they'll sit here on its own weight together, straight up and down. Mm, then I'll make my hoop on the top. I think it's turning out good. I'll put flat stock across, and that flat, flat stock will hold the back part of the seat. So it should be pretty simple, straightforward. Everything is just supposed to be really simple on this car, nothing overdone. And this will make it pretty safe, I think. Get that marked. I want to be shy. I want to be on the inside so I have a good spot to weld from. Then that side, I probably want to be close because I can weld all that. I can reach all that with the welder. So close to the edge. Then I need to remake this piece. All right, so now we can move on to my favorite part. I have my tab as far back as it can go. That's kind of where I want it, so that's good. Here is my round bar. I'm ready to weld it in. All my edges are ground down, um, beveled 45 degrees, whatever my eyeball says 45 degrees is anyway, so that's what is going on there. And I ground the top down, it's beveled too. And what I'm going to do is going to look funny at first, but once you watch it, you'll understand. I'm going to take another piece of pipe here and I'm going to get them basically flush. This is going to let me know that I'm as far back as I possibly can, because that's my goal. 
further this is back, more leg room I have. So this is important. And I'm gonna get my angle right from front to back, tack welded in, then I'll get my angle side to side. So front to back, I'm going for zero degrees, obviously. Then I'll bend it whenever it needs to go side to side to be at zero degrees. Get my gun. It's almost ready here. Okay, decent tack. Get it side to side this way. I grab my hood, I don't have a hood on. Sweet, looks good. Pull this out and weld it for real. Well, that's cooling off, I'll work on the other side. So I about got these exactly where I want them. They're really close to the edge here. Um, I'm gonna make my cross piece here so it locks this whole shape in. So when I go to make the arch, that's way more complicated. Um, I won't be struggling as much with everything moving around and trying to make the arch come all the way down here. So what I'm going to do is measure this from the center to center or eyeball it close to center at least. Um, it doesn't have to be the most perfect thing in the world here. Guys get make this part too complicated. And that's about 39 and three quarters. So I'm gonna cut my other pipe at 39 and three quarters. Then I'm gonna cut a V on both ends and that V will slide down inside here and I'll weld up that V. Super simple, I don't need any fancy uh, pipe cutter or hole cutters to cut around the ends. Um, trying to make this stuff as, uh, not as complicated, guys. All right, so what I plan to do now is get this exactly where I want it and tack that in at the bottom. I didn't want to tack that in yet because I wanted to pull this out and finish welding everything that I need to put on it, put it back in, then weld it here. What I'm seeing here is that there is huge open space everywhere. This is the most critical weld and I'll be able to reach it all the way around because it's just below the body line here. So I'm not worried about that. I have my crossbar ready to go in here. And I can reach that because it's going to be right here. It's going to be just below this line. So I'll be able to reach that all the way around with my welder. So what I want to make sure is that these angles are exactly how I want them. 
and right now I have the most control with nothing on it. And if I am trying to weld my crossbar in without these being stable, I'm, I'm gonna be messing with two different things, bunch of different angles, and I'm gonna be praying that I don't miss, or being praying that I don't um, miss something in that whole process. So I get both of these individually sturdy where they need to be, then I'll put the crossbar in. And I'm not 100% sure that the length and fit of the crossbar is perfect yet, so I even still have to work that. Love for that.
right, so here it is. I didn't get a get to video the rolling of the top part of the roll bar. Uh, my pipe bender was having a very, very difficult, uh, difficult. <clears throat> so here we go. Here's the top of the roll bar, um, the most viewable part, everything. And, uh, so here we go. Here's the top of the roll bar, the most viewable part of the whole roll bar. Um, it gives it kind of that classy look. I didn't want to go with square. I wanted something round, at least give me that, you know, uh, just the, the look that I'm going for. I didn't like square. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. I didn't get to film the rolling part of it. Um, my pipe bender was really, really struggling. Uh, I've never used like this thick wall DOM actual like uh, NHRA grade uh, roll bar before. I've never done that before. And uh, my pipe bender, I've never tried doing that in my pipe bender before. And it was very, very difficult. So I think this turned out pretty good. Um, it's not as rounded as I would like it to be. You can kind of see where I bent it, uh, where the tubing's bent. So uh, hopefully when I paint it black, like a matte black, you won't be able to see all the little bends as much. Um, but the fitment, it's pretty close to being pretty accurate. Um, I'm hanging over the edges a little bit. So instead of grinding it down, thinning that wall out to get my edges perfect, I'm just gonna go ahead and weld it up. Um, so it's not the most perfect fitment in the world, but I don't want to sacrifice any of the thickness. I beveled, uh, my edges on both pipes that I'm going to weld together here. So the goal is for it to be as strong as it possibly can be. That's all I want out of this strong safety. And I want the arch to give me a little bit more of a classy look. Uh, I think that was accomplished and now I'm actually out of pipe. So I won't be able to triangle it in the back yet, but Let's get this welded on, get a good look at it, and see if I can find any of my matte black paint. Hopefully I have some. I'd like to paint this and see what the bins look like after it's painted. So here it is before I get the rest of my pipe to triangulate it back down in the back somewhere. But I think that's pretty good. It makes the Model A a lot safer. And, and that's sturdy, that's very sturdy. Welded to my plates in the bottom. I'm not finished welding that. I gotta let it cool down so I can keep welding it. My crossbar here for the seat belts. Then my hoop. I think it turned out pretty good. And once I get that matte black on there, hopefully they'll hide how the bar is bent. So you can kind of see all the little bends in it. I think that's, I think that's gonna work. Let's open up the garage door and get a look at it from afar outside and see what it looks like. And here's what it looks like with my seat in. Holds the seat. I put it as far back as I was comfortable with putting it. There's a little bit of gap there, but I wanted a little bit of a gap to play with. I didn't want it to rattle on the body when I'm driving it. And I like how it turned out.
So there we go, guys. I'm pretty happy with the roll bar. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, thank you for following along all the Trog style content all the way up to Trog, guys. So uh, share, subscribe, comment down below what you think about the build so far. Um, Trog, the race of gentlemen, is October 1st and 2nd is when I actually think the race is. We're going to get there Wednesday, and uh, we'll be there from Wednesday so until Sunday. I'll be at the Hangout area. I think it's on Pacific Avenue right there in front of the Blue Hotel. I'll be there with this car the whole time, hanging out, talking to everybody. Stop by and see me. Um, I'm going to bring some stuff for sale, some frog scoops, a couple Model A parts, stuff like that. You can check them out on my website. In the meantime, you can buy it now if you wanted to, and I can give it to you at Trog, or you can buy it there. Uh, I'm going to have some t-shirts, stuff like that. So definitely come by, see me, pick up some stuff for your hot rods, say hi. Thank you for watching, guys. Now that you've got this video, go out in your garage and get your shift together. Amount right there, pretty good amount.